Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about factoring and solving polynomials. So let's go through a couple terms first. We've talked about binomials, we've talked about trinomials, now we're talking about polynomials. Poly means many, so I have many names or many terms to a polynomial. So binomial, I had two terms, trinomial three, now polynomial, I have many terms. So polynomial could be a trinomial, polynomial could also be a binomial, it's just many terms. But most of the time in math when we talk about polynomials, we're referring to four terms, but sometimes it can refer to three or two. Generally, if we say three, it's going to be a trinomial, two is going to be a binomial. All right. Also, let's talk about factoring and solving, because factoring and solving are not the same thing. So we'll talk about factoring in just a second. We'll define factoring. Let's talk about solving. Solving, typically we have an equation and we're trying, well, we have an equation and we're trying to define a variable with a value. So we end up with y is equal to something or x is equal to something or z is equal to something or q is equal to something. So some variable we're defining as part of an equation. In the quadratic equation, we were finding the roots or the zeros and so basically we were finding the value of x when y was equal to zero, so where the graph crossed the x-axis. So when we solve an equation, it's not necessarily the same thing, or it's not the same thing as factoring, although uh, typically we factor in order to solve. Okay, so let's talk about what factoring is. Uh, so terms, a polynomial is factored completely when it is written as a product of unfactorable polynomials with integer coefficients. So let's give an example here, and I'll, I'm going to say, well, we'll use a first example, 2x squared minus 3x minus 20. And we say that this value here, this quadratic general trinomial, is not factored completely because it's not currently written as a product of unfactorable polynomials with integer coefficients. So I can factor out of this general trinomial two expressions, 2x plus 5 and x minus 4, we call these the factors. All right, so as a common factor, 2x plus 5, x minus 4. Now my trinomial is factored completely because it's written as a product of unfactorable polynomials with integer coefficients, 1, 4, 2, and 5. All right, so let's talk about ways to factor polynomials. First is we're going to factor quadratic expressions. And typically, we'll see some type of general trinomial, and that's what we saw in the last sections. And the example here is 2x squared minus 3x minus 20. So this is in standard form, ax squared uh, plus bx plus c. And in order to factor this general trinomial, you're going to use your diamond and box process. And I'm not going to go through that process because we've gone through that in prior chapters. And I assume at this point that you know how to factor using diamond and box. Second is uh, to recognize special product patterns. And the first of the special product patterns is a perfect square trinomial. In a perfect square trinomial, what we see is the square of a binomial. So x plus 4 times x plus 4, or x plus 4 squared. So we can use the diamond and box process to factor this particular trinomial. Or we can recognize that we have a perfect square trinomial in that this here is a perfect square, and the coefficient in front of the first term is a perfect square. I recognize that this potentially could be a perfect square trinomial, so I guess uh, x plus 4 squared, or I could and then uh, define that later as I express x plus 4 times x plus 4 through, or I, again, use my diamond and box process to factor. All right, difference of two squares. And the difference of, so this is the third process of factoring. Um, I use a difference of two squares when I see that I have a perfect square and a perfect square, and I just have two terms. So I have the difference of two squares, 9x, or 81x squared, and y squared, or 9x minus y times 9x plus y. And you recall we used this process when we were uh, figuring out the conjugates of complex numbers and also uh, radicals that had a, a whole number and a radical as part of the denominator. 
we multiplied it by its conjugate, and we used our understanding of the difference of two squares to uh, express these two values to find the product. It would just be 1 squared minus root 3 squared, or 1 minus 3, uh, which would be equal to 2. So a difference of two squares is another special product pattern that we've learned. Uh, in, in the example here, 81x squared minus y squared is the same as 9x minus y times 9x plus y. We don't have to go through our uh, foiling process if uh, these are in some type of quadratic form. We have x squared, no x, and then some constant. We can just use our special product patterns to figure this one out and to factor. Number four, common monomial factor. We haven't really talked about this. Uh, the assumption is that you've learned this in Algebra 1. And so what we do is we find a common factor between uh, the terms. And in, in this particular uh, quadratic, I have plus to zero here, I can see that 4x is going to be my common factor between the two terms. So I factor out of 4x, and I'm, I'm left with 2x plus 5. Now my polynomial right, is factored completely because it's written as a product of unfactorable polynomials with integer coefficients, okay, integer coefficients, unfactorable polynomials. So factoring out a common monomial. So again, to recap, we've got a general trinomial. We use a diamond and box process. We have a couple of special product patterns, and we'll learn more in just a second. Perfect square trinomial, difference of two squares, and also finding a common monomial factor, factoring that out. <clears throat> right. Now we're going to introduce another uh, special product pattern. And I've written work here because you really have to just you have to do the practice and you have to memorize these product patterns in order to become familiar with them. Uh, first is the difference or sum and difference of two cubes. Difference of two cubes looks like this. I have a cubed minus b cubed. And that's different than the cube of a binomial, which is a plus b or a minus b cubed. So the entire a plus b binomial cubed. And this is a difference of two cubes. So slight difference in that we have the parentheses around this value. We cube it. And in the difference of two cubes, or the sum of two cubes, we have the cubed of the first and the second term. So the product pattern, and again, uh, I'm just going to read through this. A lot of this requires you to practice and to look at problems. Uh, a cubed minus b cubed is the same as a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So an example would be 64x cubed minus 1. And the way that you recognize this is you think to yourself, OK, can I take the cube root of 64? and come up with a whole number result. Can I take the cube root of 1 and come up with a whole number result? And the answer to both is yes. So I, I can see that potentially this might be the difference of two cubes. The cube root of 64 is going to be 4. Cube root of x is x. Cube root of 1 is 1. So I have here a difference of two cubes. And I just plug in the values 4x and 1 into my special product pattern. And I end up with 4x minus 1 times 16x squared plus 4x squared plus 1. Or excuse me, 16x squared plus 4x plus 1. Sum of two cubes, a cubed plus b cubed. Now the difference between this pattern and the first pattern, the difference of two cubes and the sum of two cubes, the a's and b's are all going to be the same, but the pluses and minuses are different. Difference of two cubes, I have minus plus plus. Sum of two cubes, I have plus minus plus. So if you remember the pattern, then you can just simply remember where the minuses and plus goes or go for the difference of two cubes and the sum of two cubes. An example here would be 8x cubed plus 27. Again, I ask myself, can I take the cube root of 8 and x cubed and come up with a whole number result with an integer as an exponent? And the answer is yes. I have 2x here. Cube root of 8x cubed is 2x. Cube root of 27 is 3. So it looks like I have the sum of two cubes. And this factors to 2x plus 3 times 4x squared minus 6x plus 9. Right, cube of a binomial we've already learned. a plus b cubed is the same as a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b squared. And a minus b cubed is the same as a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. So it looks something like uh, 8x cubed minus 12x squared y plus 6xy squared minus y cubed the same as 2x minus y cubed. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Now we're going to move into something that tends to be a little bit more difficult for students in Algebra 2, and that's factoring by grouping. 
So I'm going to give you the first example here. I have example one, RA plus SA plus RB plus SB. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine or group two values together, and it's not necessarily these two. And then I'm going to factor out of each of the groups something that's common to both of them, some common value or common monomial. So in the first case, I'm going to combine RA and RB. RA and RB, RA plus RB, and that's the same as R times A plus B. Then I'm going to combine SA and SB, and that's the same as S times A plus B. If I were to rewrite this now, I'd have R times A plus B plus S times A plus B. And I can rewrite that even further to say R plus S times A plus B. And a lot of students make the mistake of saying, okay, well, I have to multiply this twice. But that's not true, because if you think about it, I'm already accounting for A and B twice, because I'm multiplying R times A plus B, and I'm adding S times A plus B. All right. And then another example, this is more of a numerical example. I have 27T cubed minus 3T plus 45T squared minus 5. Typically, I tell my students, take the first and third terms, try to group those in the second and fourth terms. Uh, so it would be the first and the third and the second and the fourth. And that's what I've done here. And if that doesn't work, you have to experiment with it. But generally, we're looking for some type of pattern like we've seen here with just the variables. So I group 27t cubed and negative 3t, 45t squared, and minus 5. So I'm grouping these two values. I'm going to take out a common factor in the first binomial. I take out 3t, and I'm left with 9t squared minus 1. And the second I take out or uh, factor out a common factor of 5, and I'm left with 9t squared minus 1. So that's going to result in a value of 3t plus 5 times 9t squared minus 1. And then I can factor 9t squared minus 1, because it's really the difference of two squares, into 3t plus 1 times 3t minus 1.